In today's video, we'll talk about the solution to the power query problem that I gave you in the last video. If you tried, but if you weren't able to solve it, that's totally okay. In this video, I will curate all the good solutions that I have liked in the blog comments, and I will talk you through those solutions. But before we jump on to any solution, let's just take a look at the problem real quick, and then we'll take a look at some really sophisticated and beautiful M code together. Let's start. Okay, let's just take a look at the problem real quick. So we had this simple sales data, which is where we had the sales order, product, a couple of tax columns, and the value. Now these tax columns show you that is the tax applied or is the tax not applied. One means tax is applied, zero means the tax is not applied. Now in case you would want to apply the tax, you would also want to find out that what is the percentage of tax that you have to apply, which is given to you in another table, which is this table 9%, 10%, and 12%. You have to first consider is the tax applied or not applied. In case the tax is applied, you will take this value 9% and multiply that with the value. And that's how you're going to get the tax for that particular transaction. Obviously, you're going to take every single column, find out if the tax is applied or not applied, multiply that with the respective tax rate, and then multiply that with the value to calculate total tax. In terms of the output, I had asked you to prepare this particular output, which is where all the columns remain the same but you also get one additional column, which is nothing but the total tax. I also had a couple of constraints. I hope you've read through that. One of the constraints that I had kept for the bold hearted was that you're not allowed to use the unpivot or the pivot feature of Power Query. Now I'm gonna talk you through the most sophisticated, more advanced solutions that people have um, shown up here uh, on the blog comments, and we'll go through those solutions one by one. No further ado, let's take a look at four of my favorite solutions. Before I jump on to the solutions that people have posted, since most of them have happened to use a function called record.field, it's important for me to talk about that function real quick in a jiffy. And once we understand that, hopefully you'll be able to understand what these solutions are and how do they work. But first, let's just take a look at record.field. Now there happens to be a function in Power Query called record.field. What it does is it gives you a value of a column of a certain row. So let's just say that we have this two columnar data. We have the name and the number, really simple. And I end up creating one more custom column through the add columns option. Now, once I create that custom column in the custom column box that appears, I happen to write this formula, record.field. The first part of this function is that what record are you trying to refer to? Give me a record as an input. So underscore, if you happen to write it right here, this is going to grab the first row of the data. Record means one row of the data. Then when you write it, the underscore in the second row, it's going to give you the second row of the data and then the third row of the data. So underscore simply means the current record that you're referring to. So that's the first part. The second part in record.field is that you have to give the name of the column that you're trying to refer to. So in this particular record, which is a two columnar data, we have two different columns. We have the name column and we have the number column. And I can reference to any of the column. Let's just say that if I say number, so it goes to this record, goes to the number column, picks up that value and pushes that value right here. So you're going to see number nine, which is a pretty big nine right here. You're going to see number nine in this cell right here. All right, that was record.field, really simple. You input the record and you mention the name of the column and you get the value of that record. Now let's just go take a look at the solutions that people have provided. All right, the first shout out to Victor. Brilliant solution. I will not really write every single piece of M code that these people have written, but I will give you a broad overview and understanding of how their code is working and bring out uh, nuances if there are any. But you're gonna have fun. Please take a look at the way that he has solved the problem. So what he does is, uh, the first thing that he is using is, he's using this table.columnNames function. What this function is going to do is, it's going to actually extract the names of the columns of the tax table in a form of a list. So imagine that this is a tax table and the names of the columns are going to be captured in a form of a list like that. And that is stored right here, which is nothing but the tax columns. That's part one. Now, then he uses the list.accumulate function and he's creating one additional column to calculate tax. And the list.accumulate function is trying to accumulate through all of these values tax, tax two and tax three, and then trying to able to uh, do that accumulation. Now what happens in every single loop of list.accumulate? 
Now, in the first part, he's taking record dot field just as the way that we took a look at. He's saying that go in the first row of the tax table. So tax table first row is right here. Then he says current. Current happens to be the first value right here. He picks up this value, which is 9%. That's the first part. Then he says this value, which is 9%, should be multiplied with the current row of the sales data, which is this entire row of the sales data, which also happens to be a record. Then he says current right here, which again is nothing but the tax, which is nothing but this particular value, which is one. So 9% multiplied by one gives you 9% once again, multiply by the value right here, which is nothing but 14.7 is going to give you the applicable tax. Now this needs to be done for all the values which are there in the loop. So this is going to be done for tax two column. Similarly, 10% multiplied by zero multiplied by 14.7 and going to be done once again for tax three, which is one multiplied by 12 multiplied by 14.7. And then all of that value is summed up in the state, which is going to be the output of that function. Really clean solution. I really liked it. And the benefit of writing this solution is that he doesn't even need that the names of the columns should contain the word tax. Even if they don't contain the word tax, this solution is absolutely going to work just fine. It's just that these columns within this table and these columns within these table should have the same names of the column, which was one of the constraints uh, as provided by me and a really, really good solution. All right, let's just go take a look at the next one. All right, next up is our very own MMA173. I have given him a shout out in the past as well for creating some really nifty M solutions, and this is no less. He gives an alternative to using the list.accumulate function, and this is absolutely brilliant. Please take a look. So the first part of the solution is to capture the table into a record format. So you can see that he has created something like a tax record. Go to the tax table and get me the first row of data, which happens to be this like a record. So once you write this type of thing, the table name and the row number, it is going to give you one row of the data and the row of the data is also going to contain the headers. So still pretty much the same data like this, but the only difference is that in this format, this is now converted into a record format. All right. And this record gets stored right here, which is nothing but the tax record. That's the first part. In the next part, once the table has been converted to a record, then he extracts the names of the column headers in a form of a list. And you can see that he happens to use a function right here, which is nothing but record dot field names of this table, which is the tax record, which he just created right here. And this is going to take the headers of this record and push them out in a form of a list like that. Now, once the list has been created, what he's going to do is he's going to capture the value of this uh, table or this record right here. And then he's going to capture this value, multiply them too. And then he's then eventually going to multiply that with the sum. So the first record dot field right here goes to the tax record, which is nothing but this little record right here. And it's going to pick up the underscore. The underscore happens to be the first value right here. That is the first value, which is 9%. That's part one. Then he says record dot field once again, and then he says row record. What is row record? Row record is nothing but the first row of the data, which is right here. Then he says underscore once again, underscore happens to be again the tax value, which is nothing but one. He's multiplying one with 9% and eventually he's summing up all the percentages first. Once all the percentages are summed up, then he multiplies that with the value. And that is going to be the output of this solution and which is going to create a nice and nifty tax column. Brilliant solution. Let's just move on to the next one. Okay, next up is Garusha. I'm not really sure if I'm saying the name right, but this solution is also pretty good. It's the same solution as MMA173, but the names of the variables are shorter, which tend to produce a cleaner M code or maybe a more difficult looking M code. Who knows, depending upon your preference, but please take a look. I will quickly take you through the solution once again. So again, we are creating a little uh, record right here, which is right here. So record dot field names, uh, there happens to be a rec tax uh, created, which is where I am just going to this table and capturing the names of the columns in a form of a list. Now, once I do capture the names of the columns in form of a list, I'll have tax one and then tax two and then tax three in a form of a list. And again, I will use record dot field for the first time to capture this value 
and then again record dot field this time to capture this value and then multiply them too and sum up all the taxes and then eventually multiply all of that with the value slightly different way of writing the m code but pretty much the same solution as mma 173 pretty good work over there all right next up is muhammad guess what how many solutions he provided he provided not one not two but six solutions in total and i'm going to be talking about his sixth solution which is the best one please take a look it's slightly tricky but it's very very interesting take a look so the first thing that he's doing is he's creating this buffered tax list right here so let's just go step by step the first thing is that he's demoting the headers of this table called tax so once you demote the headers of the table the actual word tax is going to come in the first row and you will have artificial headers on the table so imagine this is the first row of data the second row of the data and you have now got artificial headers on top of this which is nothing but column one and then you will have column two and then you will have column three something like that now once the headers have been demoted then what he's trying to do is he's trying to pack all of the three columns which is column one column two and column three in a form of a list so this becomes the list right here this becomes the second list right here and this becomes the third list right here which is done using a function called table dot two columns now what do we have we have this list and in each and every list we have two items the actual word tax the literal word tax and the percentage which is nine percent now we move on from here then he uses this list that we have created and he's just maybe using this list and he's trying to grab elements of the list very very creatively so the first thing he does is he creates every single element of the list as the variable f so the first time this becomes f right in f what he's trying to do is he's trying to grab the first row of f which is the zeroth row because the counting starts with zero so once you grab the zeroth row of the f f is nothing but the list and in the list you have two items you have the actual uh, tax and you have the percentage value so zeroth item means the actual word tax right so that is stored right here as the word tax now this particular tax which is a text input goes in the function called record dot field underscore here means the first row of the data and which is nothing but a record in this record we are pulling up this column which is tax and you are going to get this value which is nothing but one so one gets captured with this record dot field function which gets multiplied again with f f is nothing but this list this time he's picking up the first row of the data which is nothing but the second row of technically the second row of data because the counting starts with zero so he's then picking up nine percent so one multiply by nine percent so this is one and this is nine percent and this is going to give you some value which is nine percent once again he does that again and again over all the values of this list so the second time this becomes the f and the third time this becomes the f and the process just repeats itself now every single time this has been done multiplication eventually all of the multiplication done is going to get summed up which is then going to be multiplied with the value column right here and that is going to be the answer of this problem and that is again a very very brilliant way of building a solution okay finally if you have any life energy and perhaps any interest left please take a look at my solution as well so what i'm trying to do first here is that i'm trying to extract all the names of the columns in a form of a list that's the part one of the solution then what i do is i create a simple one row table for every single row of the data so here i'm creating the a table which just contains the three columns tax tax two and tax three which is just going to contain the first row of data which is one zero and one and that is done through uh, this function right here which is nothing but underscore simply means the first record right here from this record i'm extracting the column names which is nothing but these columns right here and i'm saying that please select only just three columns from this table which is tax tax two and tax three now this happens to become just a one row table 
with the exact columns as you would have in the tax table. So this table has got one row and now this table also has got one row of data. Now once I have got one row of data for both the tables then I'm going to combine the tables together. So my table is going to look like this since the headers are the same it's going to look something like this. Same headers and then in the first row you will have one zero and one which is nothing but the data of the first row and then you will have nine percent ten percent and twelve percent which is going to be nothing but the data of the tax table. Now once these two tables um, have been combined I then take a product of the two. So 1 multiply by 9, 0 multiply by 1, 1 multiply by 12 that's the product that I have taken. Once the products has been taken then I eventually sum all of those products and then I multiply that with the value column and that is going to be the answer of the solution. All right, as you've taken a look, all of these solutions had brilliant display of the M code and the logic that these people have put together. That's absolutely incredible. If you're starting out with the M language, obviously these solutions are going to look very, very complicated. And I suggest that you please take a look at the solution provided by Brian Julius, which is easy, uses the standard functions on the UI of Power Query, but definitely gets the job done. And just in case if I missed covering your solution explicitly, it's more of my omission rather than any problem with your solution. And of course, just as the way that we always do it, a big, 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 big shout out to everybody who participated, multiple answers in fact, and gave us the solutions to such amazing problems in Power Query. Thanks so much for spending our time on this problem and providing your solutions just like the way that you always do. In the end, a big shout about my DAX and my Power Query courses in case you are starting out with Power BI and you need help to understand DAX, Power Query and data modeling right from scratch and then start to build more sophisticated problems and more sophisticated solutions even of your own data, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be super awesome. Thanks so much for sticking all around this while. It was indeed a very difficult uh, one. In case you have any questions on this, please feel free to drop in a comment and I will be glad to reply. Thanks so much and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.